will a 3D scanner really add any value to your shop? Well, in this video, we're going to reverse engineer this Honda CB750 upper yoke, both traditionally and with a 3D scanner. You can see both of these reverse engineering processes side by side, and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll know whether a 3D scanner is right for you or not. When you're reverse engineering a part with traditional hand tools or measuring equipment like a caliper or like a height gauge, you really, you're measuring what you can get uh, your indicator on or your calipers on and then you're using your CAD software to calculate to the center of these features and then make a best guess at what the engineer's intention was. When I use all the gauges like angle gauges, radius gauges, and height gauges and then I use those in connection with the CAD software it's just it's a cool little puzzle and I really enjoy reverse engineering. Something that's really helped making videos like this and also running the shop is a programmable desk. This desk is pretty solid and it has several programmable levels where I can sit or I can stand because I'm always doing that in a machine shop I find. I'm either going to the mill or going to the surface plate and taking measurements and then I walk all the way back to my desk. I got one extension cord that powers the computer and everything and it allows me to take it to whatever I'm doing in the shop. It's also really sturdy. It can pick up 355 pounds. The desk is pretty tough. It doesn't shake when I use it. It's definitely been a really good asset in our shop and it's allowing me to work on my beer belly just a little bit. If you're interested, there's a link below so you can pick up one of your own. We appreciate you supporting our sponsors so we can keep making videos like these. So now we're going to compare the structured light scanner versus the blue laser scanner. The first one is going to be structured light. Notice when we start scanning this that it's not capturing any data because even though this was painted back in 1995, it's still too reflective. So we have to use some scanning spray for this particular part and really you should be using it for most parts unless the finish is dull. Now, with a structured light, it uses the data it has captured to capture the next data in line. In other words, the more complex your part, the more details involved, the better your scan will be. But if you're scanning a wall or a hubcap, there's just not enough data to track its location. Now we'll transition into the blue laser scanner. I really love this and I could recommend this to any machine shop looking to get into reverse engineering. Notice we had no preparation into this part. We just dropped it on here and started scanning and it's able to pick up chrome plating or even this black shiny surface. Now you can do that, but if you spend some time like you see here into some scanning spray, then it can cut down a 30 minute scan down to a 15 minute scan. Now blue laser is also very different from structured light because blue laser requires these scanning markers. So we started manufacturing our own scanning markers out of acrylic so that when it came time for post-processing we could just delete uh, the data that it captured around it and reduce our post-processing time. Notice here I just rotated around. It didn't capture any of our scanning markers. I just delete that base and then our post-processing on the scan is done and we ended up with a really good scan that we can use for reverse engineering. So now let's briefly go over how you get started modeling from a mesh. The first thing I do is I can press my mesh so then when I insert it in the fusion it's not 500 megabytes I can control that size I use the uh, mesh inspector to do that make sure that when you're inserting a mesh in the fusion you actually insert it you don't want to upload it at like a file this way you get to control what unit it's in you can actually use the center option which is great it gets a part really close to center uh, like drawing a box around your part and then we can press the ground that puts it uh, as if it was sitting on the ground and so it moves it pretty close but it's still not perfect so now we go to our mesh tools and we use the create mesh selection tool select the bottom plane and as you drag that up you're making a section view of this part or a split line of this part that you can use to make a sketch. So this is going to be our first one. We're going to use this just to make sure our part's sitting correctly. 
So let's right click and edit this sketch. And then because we have extracted this from a mesh, we get this option called fit curves to mesh section. And then we want to use our circle option. It just does its best to put a circle tangent to the geometry that's present right there. And it usually does a really good job. Now we'll find out if these are horizontal from one another. But first, let's go ahead and define these so they don't move on us. And we'll make these equal, fix the center points, and then define the diameter. Let's go ahead and move into millimeters because this is a Honda after all. It's definitely modeled in millimeters. And then we'll make this 41.1 uh, later. Now we'll draw a line. Let's make it off axis and that way we can give it a definition or relation of horizontal there. And now we can see that we're a little off. Then when we draw this other line, uh, I'm going to satisfy my OCD here. But then we'll measure the angle that this model is off and then we'll rotate it from that center point of that other. So yes, it's off 0.4 degrees. So now we'll just uh, close out our sketch and then we'll turn on our yoke scan and we'll offset at that 0.44 degrees that we're looking at here. Okay, now we go to our move command, select our mesh, and we're gonna set a pivot point of the center of that circle. Hit okay and then we'll move him down and then negative and then we just paste in from our measuring tool. Now let's go back and we're going to do this over again so we'll go back to our mesh uh, create mesh section grab our plane move it up. Now this time when we say OK we're going to remeasure these two holes and make sure that they're horizontal from each other. So we'll say we're going to edit that sketch, go to our fit curves, then we'll grab our circle again, hit OK. Now we're going to go ahead and start adding some definitions here. Uh, for instance, the diameter of this is 41.1 millimeters. Remember that from the first model. Then we're going to make them equal, so they're both the same diameter. Then we're going to make sure they're horizontal from each other. Yep, that checks out. And then we're going to make sure they are symmetrical across the y-axis. And then we'll add that measurement of 192 millimeters. Let's see what we get in the scan. Yep, we almost get exactly that. So, so that turned out really good. We've got the mesh situated, which is 90% of it. Now when we go back to this option, notice that we can follow the part around. Like for instance, I grab a line, then I grab a grab a radius and we're moving around this part pretty quick and it's snapping to this section view of this part and I also have my tangencies on so it goes ahead and adds those relationships. Now as you do that you'd want to start adding some definitions and calling out some angles and radiuses and diameters as you go all the way around the part. You're going to start extruding from the center planes or those cut planes and so this model is going to be a little bit less straightforward to go back and edit but it is more accurate because that mesh is always there as a reference or a guide so you'll never get crazy off. If you do make a mistake it'll be pretty small. So we went ahead and 3D printed this and now we can put it on the bike for a test fit before we go to machining. So now it's time to figure out which one was more accurate. What I've done is since I've already imported in this mesh, we can go ahead and start comparing this. Now Fusion does not have a real way to use a mesh to give us some QC results, but I figured out kind of a way around that. We go into manufacturing here, and then we set up a setup. So we're gonna set up a setup. We wanna make our body the model. The stock we wanna make from a solid, it's gonna be our yoke. And then we just say okay on that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make a dummy. I'm gonna take a six millimeter probe and I'm going to select some geometry on this hole here. That'd be fun. I just needed some kind of dummy. You could do a milling op. It doesn't matter what you do because that's not what we're going to use it for. 
Now we're going to say, let's go into our simulation and we're going to see how close we modeled this to the 3D scan. Now I want my tool off. I don't want my tool path to be visible either. I want my stock to be visible and I want to put it on comparison. When I do that, I want to crank up the accuracy and then I want to make sure my leftover stock says zero. Notice how close we are. Everything that is green is showing that we are within tolerance if our tolerance was plus or minus 15 thousandths. So it says 30, but that's plus or minus 15, which gives us 30 thousandths. That's how uh, this tool works. So if I say I want to see if I'm within 5 thousandths plus or minus, you know, uh, we're going to start seeing some different results pretty quick. Uh, what I can tell you right now is all the main features are in green, and that's good. Any deviation we see has to do with the uh, with the casting, or you know that it that we didn't place it just right. This is the this is the one that we modeled it based on. If you remember back from the beginning, but we got really close. Now, what if we did the same thing to the one that we modeled without the 3D scan? Now here we can notice. If I show my yoke 3D scan, I can see I did not anticipate that sharp angle. These holes are just a little off. These are pretty close, right? These are pretty close. It looks like a lot is right on, but keep in mind, I did not handle or model any of the draft angles. So when we do the same thing here and run the simulation, now we can see how close we modeled it. And so, yeah, we got some positive material in blue here. Maybe if we raise up the tolerance to 10 thousandths, then we can start seeing if we're any closer. We're, we're at the top and the bottom. Clearly, there's some deviation in the scan uh, in that. But, you know, you look here, we miss those, you know, I miss, and I miss that. And these holes are not correct. Um, yeah, and I can see I've got a little bit too much material on both of these little standoffs for whatever reason. So having the scanner really would have saved me uh, some headaches in going through iterations of this design. So that wraps up this video. I'm going to be a little forthright with you. I was a little late in the game getting on board with the 3D scanners. I was stuck in my head that just because you can scan something doesn't mean you can use the mesh. But I have to be honest now, the technology is there where we can really use that mesh and reverse engineer around it and use it for sketches and other things. It's still a little laborious. There's no doubt about it. Uh, both of these took about the same amount of time. With the traditional way, it took me about 50 minutes. And with the mesh way, it took me a little bit under 50 minutes, you know, to reverse engineer both of these parts. So but it did take me 10 minutes to scan it, if you wanted to calculate that in. But it saved me a lot of time in uh, figuring out where I made mistakes, 3D printing parts and fitting them. And so the blue laser scanner, it's opened a lot of doors for us. It saved us a lot of trouble. And it's also brought in new customers. When we put it on our website, a lot of people were looking for people that could 3D, 3D scan a part and reverse engineer it. And I wasn't aware of that. So I hope you learned something from this video. I hope you take away something that can make your shop more valuable. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel, like the video, maybe share it with someone you think would benefit too. But we appreciate you watching. We'll catch you next time.